What's up, Jax fans? Man, it's feel like it's been so long since we have uh, talked Jax. I mean, we haven't really had a reason to. We did a little bit of a show after the Pro Bowl. We did a little bit of a show um, kind of talking about the salary cap. But today we finally have something to talk about. Trent Balky and Doug Peterson both gave uh, interviews and press conferences today at the NFL Combine. And although I don't think there's much we can take from it, we can definitely watch it and see what's happening. So we're actually going to watch the videos a little bit. We're going we're gonna to watch a little bit of the interviews. We're going to kind of talk about uh, what we think they might mean, if they mean anything. If this is your first show with us, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. We may have some new fans because we have a new year coming on. So uh, it's a fan-driven show. Everyone in the chat, you can see the chat this way. Uh, they're all fans. I'm a fan, and we just talk Jags. So I want to get your opinion um, on all of this stuff. Like, what did you think they meant by anything? What did you learn? Uh, is there any indication on the future from what they said? Uh, and just make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel while you're here. Like the video while you're here. My Twitter and Instagram are down below. That's how I communicate most of the time with uh, other people. Uh, first one in the chat is channel member Volkfang, who says, holy guacamole Batman. And probably because uh, I haven't done a show in a couple weeks. That's my bad. You know, it took a little, little hiatus. Uh, Raiden Shogum says, hello. William said, what insights did we gain from those press conferences today? I don't think much. I think actually, I think we kind of learned something if we read between the lines of what Trent Baalke said. I think he might have actually played his hand a little too strong on something. And I don't think it's what you think I'm going to say. Rajib says, getting a live show in before the end of February. Let's go, boys. Hey, at this rate, we're one per month. That's 12 live shows. Um, this is a live show. We do live shows. We don't do pre-recorded shows. Those uh, are just fun. And I like to have fun. And I like to talk to you guys. So, And as you can see, I'm, I'm not even oriented correctly here. Um, Cali Jag says LFG baby. Volk Fang says, I'm trying to remind myself that despite Balky's comments, we're going to pass on Pro Bowl level, level players because they're not Balky built. Charlie Boy says UCF is streaming too. I did, I did see that. And that's why I actually kind of waited like 10 minutes. Um, you know, we try not to stream at the same time, but with news like today coming out, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so if people are watching my video, you can go back and watch his on VOD. And if you're watching this on VOD, you probably were watching his video. So e however you found it and however you got here, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Show him some love. He's, he's an awesome guy. Uh, Josh L says, what's up, Duval? Brenneman. Brenneman's on in, in the Twitch chat sometimes. I have been on Twitch a good amount. So the Twitch link is down below. Uh, I've been doing some stuff over there, so uh, you can subscribe to that if you'd like, uh, and you can find me there a lot of times. Uh, Mrs. Duval, who is a new channel member, wow, uh, Mrs. Duval, I, I never want to take for granted someone being a channel member, so whether it's you or Volkfang or anyone else that's in here that's been a channel member, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for gassing me up on Twitter. I really appreciate it, Mrs. Duval. That's so nice of you. Let's jump into the film review here, okay? So we're going to actually review this, um, this a little bit here, and we're going to, and, and if, tell me if you can't hear it, and I'll try to turn it up. Uh, let me think. No, let's go. So the first question, what's up, Matt Gidry? Uh, Raiden said I messaged you on Instagram. Hopefully you can do a player breakdown on him one day. Oh, yes, I will check that out. Thank you for letting me know. I'll check that out. I'm going to do player breakdowns here soon. First question he's asked, and it sounds like it's by Hayes Carline, um, is is the cap jumping going to change your strategy on what the Jags are going to do? I don't think it really changes anything. Obviously, it affects everybody the same way. So it's not like it creates an advantage or a disadvantage for us. So there's no feeling one way or another on it. So first question asked, is the cap changing going to affect anything? And he says no. He says they have their plan, um, and, and and I think he's I think he's actually honest in a lot of these answers. I don't think he gives us a lot of information intentionally, um, but I do think that what he's kind of can I exit out of this? Nice. I think what he's kind of meaning is like they probably already 
factored in uh, the fact that they were going to have this cap jump. Uh, the, le the leagues notify the teams way before they notify the fans of this cap jump. So they've probably been aware of what's going to be happening. They've been – the NFL wouldn't, like, spring it on them now. They probably told them going into the end of the season what it was going to jump to. Um, it does allow the Jags a little bit more flexibility to, to keep their own players – but what he's kind of hinting at is it's going to allow other teams flexibility to keep their own players. So as far as keeping uh, our players helpful, as far as going and poaching others, uh, not very helpful. All right, I, let's see. I have I have the the next question is going to be about um, uh, about Josh Allen, the latest on Josh Allen. Josh, working. You know that's an ongoing discussion that we're having with his agent. Uh, in fact, later today, I'm going to have another meeting with him as well. So just ongoing. Okay. So the only bit of advice that, or the only bit of information we got from this was that they were going to have a meeting today. Interesting that they pushed the contract talk so late. Um, it appears that maybe he wants to use the leverage of going to the combine to try to maybe get Josh Allen to negotiate for lower money. Maybe this is how Trent Baalke does things. It just seems like if you're at the combine to interview draftees and to and to talk to other coaches and GMs about what they may be doing, why would now you got to set apart some time while you're at the combine to talk to Josh Allen's camp? That just seems like a bad strategy, time managerial wise, if you know what I mean. Like, use the time at the combine for the combine, not to be negotiating a contract. I, I don't know though. I don't want to speculate on that. Let's just, you know, we got a week, a little over. He's asked about the franchise tag. He says, don't want to speculate. For a week to, to work with here. We're going to work diligently with his agent to try to come to a resolution on this thing. So that's that's where our focus is right now. So, again, no information. Um, they're working. They got a week. Basically, what it sounds like is if they don't get the deal done within the week, then they're going to franchise tag them. Is what it sounds like. Um, so, Rajib says, also, how did we end up with the GM with the ugliest voice in the league? I've heard some things about my voice. So, uh, that one I'm not going to touch, Rajib's, but I, I get where you're coming from. Guy says, would like to say where they're at percentage wise with Josh Allen. They're not going to. Uh, he's he, he doesn't really say anything in this interview. The best thing from this interview is probably the fact that I own this little like top that he's wearing. I got it. Uh, I, I got it at a uh, at like a fanatic store and they sell it like fell off a truck. That was kind of weird, but I got it. It's pretty cool. The same one. I, I love it. I wear it at home games all the time. Uh, Volk Fang says this Josh Allen stuff was ridiculous. We could have started weeks or months ago. Procrastinator extraordinaire. He's been doing this for a long time, so he's probably got a method to his madness. I would probably say. Um, no, we'll see. Rajiv says he's using time at the combine, so he doesn't need to use time at the concubine. Jared Williams says, my boy, what's good, Jason? Not much. Um, I say this every show, but I'm, I'm, I'm exiting busy season at my job. So hopefully I'll have some new stuff for y'all coming out soon. Um, how much do you think Josh Allen is asking for? Uh, he probably wants. He's probably asking to be the highest paid DN in the league because if his agents are smart, like in any negotiation, you ask for the the ceiling, and then when you meet in the middle, you're somewhere where you want to be. So I'm guessing he probably wants five years, 120 million. I don't know. I'm speculating. I'm using Trent Balky words now. Speculating. Um, yo, Jason. This is from Tech Is My World. Even though I don't like Press Taylor, would you agree that improving and strengthening our O-line could also possibly expand his play calling? Tekken, I've said this a lot on this show. I'm not one to get on Press Taylor's play calling. I think that Press Taylor's play calling, and we've heard this from Doug Peterson. We're going to watch Doug Peterson's after this. I've, I think their play calling are, is very similar. I, the play call goes through Doug Peterson's headset. They've talked about it in the past how Press Taylor will call it on certain downs, which leads me to believe that that Doug Peterson probably takes over play calling sometimes on fourth downs, fourth quarters. 
They probably have a good relationship. I mean, it's his protege. I can't imagine the play calling is too much different. I do think the offensive line really hamstrung all the play calling this year. I mean, I challenged everyone that watches shows to imagine imagine calling a football game as an offensive coordinator, knowing you can't run the ball in the middle. That severely limits what you can do. So I'm a little bit more hesitant on Press Taylor's play calling than a lot of people are. But again, that's just my opinion. Um, Volkfang says Balky is 98% coach speak. I think you could have count the real info he's given in his whole career on one hand. Yeah. Balky's opening uh, offer must have been $25 and wrong. <laughs> Uh, the next question I think is about Calvin Ridley. Could you potentially pull off and get Ridley back without having to give up that second round pick? Well, the, we're not real concerned with that, whether it's a second or a third round. We're just going to work to, with the player and see if we can come to an agreement, when yeah. that, whether that's before that uh, – compensation changes or not that that remains to be seen but we're more focused on the player that that is just an, an, an utter bold-faced lie it's his job to know when like, the best for his job is to manage this team and if you think for a second he's not waiting till after that deadline to sign the deal what'll probably happen this is my guess is that He'll let Calvin, like literally the day that Calvin Ridley is, is eligible to be tampered with by other teams, they're going to wait like 20 minutes and he's going to sign with the Jags to save that Jags draft pick. This is just, this is just a bold faced lie. Like, of, of course, he's not, he's, he's thinking about the draft pick. Like Mark Moon said, second and third rounder is a huge difference, huge difference. I mean, you're talking massive difference between the players you get in the second round versus the third round. So the fact that he's worried about the player, not the pick, is just a bold-faced lie. It's just an absolute bold-faced lie. So, uh, again, coach speak, whatever you're going to say. Um, yeah, we're going to continue to have conversations with all of them. We've got a lot of work to do this offseason. You know, I had a meeting with Kelvin uh, the other day in my office. I had a great talk with Kelvin, know exactly where he's at, and, and he knows where we're at. So we're just going to continue to work with all these players and try to come to some, some form of compromise, some form of resolution as, as the weeks go on. Okay, so now he's being asked about the pass rush, which you can tell he's a little perturbed because he knows he didn't do enough last year, but now he's going to try to spin it like he did. I think there's so many things that go into the decisions you make on, on, a, on every individual player. It's hard to... You know, without going into detail on each player in each situation and what's available, hard to lay that all out in your mind. But the, every player has a, the different specifics that go along with getting a deal done or not getting a deal done. Our focus is on getting deals done, and that's where we're going to keep it. Like, bro, you just talked for a minute and said nothing. Every player has different variables that go into their contract well duh duh i mean like what kind of what kind of response is that and i get it it's coach speak he doesn't want to say anything but you gotta be kidding me dude like why even answer the question like why even take questions i mean i know he, maybe he has to but volk fang says i saw that stat that 40 percent of jags runs went for one or fewer yards and 25 percent were for no game if you need a perspective on how difficult it was for the Jags to rely on the run game. Callie Jag says, you can tell when he's lying before he speaks because he says, eh. <laughs> That's what we call uh, a vocalized pause, right? So good speakers will just take a pause before their next thought. And some people will use a vocalized pause like, eh, before they start talking. Tech in is my world says, I think improving our tech, our trenches can help out a lot of things especially if you look at the lions and the chiefs mark moon says it's 2024 uh can we mic the media already <laughs> seriously dude like how hard is that to uh to do it 
Um, I think he's about to answer a question about Cam Robinson. Did you guys do enough in the pass rush? Okay, this is the question, of the, did you, and this is from Mia O'Brien. And for all the Mia O'Brien haters out there, I think she asked the most pointed questions, which I do appreciate. So she's going to ask here specifically, did you do enough to help with the pass rush last year? Well, that, that's, you know, everyone has an opinion on that. You know, I don't ever try to look back and say, what if? Uh, there's. I don't ever try to look back and say, what if? Now, I, I get what he's trying to say here. You got to look forward. But um, a little self-reflection, I don't think, hurts sometimes, uh, especially for Trent Baalke. But he, let's hear what he has to say. There's things that we got to do better. You know, and it, it ultimately it falls on my shoulders. Okay. Now, I blasted him the last time we heard Trent Baalke talk because I said he didn't take accountability and how I wouldn't want to work with, work for anyone who cannot take accountability. So I will give him credit. He did take a little bit of accountability here. He says it falls on my shoulders, which I do appreciate. At least he's starting to take a little bit of accountability here on him being the one who is making the decisions. So I'll take that. You know, to, to make the right decisions, make the right moves, with obviously a lot of talk and discussion with Coach. And uh, we're very much on the same page. Uh, and, and work hard to be on the same page. So, you know, we're going to continue to do the, do what we do. Again, at least he's taking accountability. This doesn't really provide us with any any information. Um, they're talking. Doug Peterson and Trimbalk are talking. So, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, we'll get to a little bit more here. Cam Robinson. Season, there was some ambiguity about if Cam Robinson will be back on the team in 2024. Do you guys have a resolution to that, or, or is, is his contract going to have to be renegotiated, or, or what's the sense of Cam? I don't know where where, where the ambi ambiguity was. Uh, he's under contract, and the expectation is that he will be back. You know. We've had a lot of discussions over the last two weeks. We obviously got a lot of moves we got to do. There's a lot of players that have hit free agency. There's another bunch of young guys that we're working on potential extensions for. So we've got a lot of balls in the air right now, and we're just going to try to play them one by one. I hate how he started this, and he says, I don't know where the ambiguity comes from. The ambiguity comes from he's the biggest hit on our books next year, and he only played in half of the games, and you can cut him and save a lot of money. Like, why is he playing coy or dumb here? Like, we know he's under contract. We know that technically, yes, he's under contract for the next year, but we all can put ourselves in your shoes and empathize with you and we know that you have a player that's hitting your books for the largest percentage of your salary cap next year and only played in half of the games. And we also know, because we have access to their contracts and to the salary cap, that if you cut him, you save a lot of money. So I don't understand why he's playing dumb here. Like, uh, the second half of his answer, we have a lot of people to evaluate. Okay. That's fine. But the fact that he's going to sit there and just act like that, it's like, oh, the head's in the sand. I don't know what's going on. It's just it's just insulting. And I don't know why these these me, these GMs, for some reason, are under the impression that we don't know what their job is or what they're supposed to be doing. So, I don't know. That that part kind of irritated me a bit. So, you guys had to restructure so now, we, now we're going to get a question about restructuring. So, let's see what you say about restructuring people's deals. Contracts, I know you don't necessarily like to do that every year. Is that something that you're going to have to do again this year? Or? Well, we're in good cap sh shape right now. I mean, we, we're sitting pretty good. I think we're right in the middle to upper tier of the league in terms of cap space available. And we've got moves that we can do to, to create more cap space. So we like the position we're in. We like the flexibility that we have. 
And again, we're not going to disclose any of our, our thoughts right here, but we feel good about where we're at. What else are they going to say here? We're panicking. We're st- we don't know what we're going to do. We're going to try to restructure um, everybody. I mean, you, I mean, I'm trying to think of people they could restructure and keep. Maybe Brandon Sheriff, even though they already restructured it last year and guaranteed, guaranteed him the con- his contract. Can't really restructure him. Devon Hamilton, you just signed him. I mean, you can't really restructure him. Roy Robertson Harris, same thing. I don't know. Tekken says, as dumb Balky is, do you still see him making good moves in free agency just like in 2022, especially now being clowned all around again? Well, I think he made good additions, but I don't like the way he handled the restructuring. I don't like the way that he restructured Aluakon. I don't like the way that he restructured Sheriff, like I just said. Um Roy Robertson Harris didn't like that restructuring. So, no, I don't trust him to make moves. I mean, he overspent on players that he hoped were going to be good, which is what you do in free agency. He hit on Kirk. I think he hit on Aluakon. He hit on um, Darius Williams. But Evan Ingram, we got to give him credit for Evan Ingram now. All right. Um, I don't know. No, I don't answer your question. So now he's being asked about the talent that's on the interior of the offensive defensive line and people at the combine he's seen. I don't know. You know, broad brush. I think it's a good ta- a good group. I think that there's str- there's strength in the interior, both on the defensive side and the offensive side. So I would look for it to be a very competitive group coming out of this year's draft. Again, nothing. That was a nothing burger. Absolutely no information given us to us there. Absolutely none. Darius Tyson returning to form, getting healthy on the outside, rolling with those guys, and then who would be your third? You have- so now this is where I think we can learn the most about what their intentions are. And again, I'm going to let him answer, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. And it's not what you think I'm going to say, I promise you. He's asked about who's going to be the third corner. Yeah, it's a good question. Who's going to be the third? You know, we've got to add to that group. You know, I think Coach Nielsen spoke on it. Coach Peterson's probably spoke on it. Now I'm speaking on it. It's a group that we need to do, to address. We feel good about the group we have. We feel like we got some good young guys to work with. We got some guys, some veterans in there. But we're definitely going to look to add to that group. Okay. So you mean to tell me, follow my logic here. You mean to tell me that every question before this and every question after this, he's going to completely deflect. He's going to give us a a no answer. Okay, he's going to tell us nothing. And then the only question that could potentially tip the hand of who they're going to draft in the first round, he goes all in and says, we definitely are going to address it. Ryan Nielsen spoke on it. Doug Peterson spoke on it. Now I'm speaking on it. We have to add to that room. We have to improve there. We have good young guys, but we have to improve there. Okay. Smoke screen and a half right here. This leads me to believe we are not drafting a corner in the first round. And I know everyone, every pundit has been saying this means that we are going to draft a corner in the first round, but I think it's the opposite. I think he's, he's doing this intentionally so that the teams ahead of him or the teams below them will think the Jags are going to take a corner, so they're going to move up and get the, a said corner, and then the Jags will have who they want after that. Additionally, you have he's he has been standing behind Luke Fortner, Brandon Sheriff, Cam Robinson, Walker Little, the defensive line. He stood behind and supported all these guys who didn't play well last year. The only position where we like actually have two really good starters is corner. We have Darius Williams and Tyson Campbell. Are you going to draft a corner in the first round to be your nickel corner? That makes absolutely zero sense. Smoke screen right here. The only thing that we can learn from this Trent Balky press conference is that we are not drafting a corner in the first round. 
because this is the only time he's actually tipped their hand on anything they're thinking. He's been asked about Josh Allen. He's been asked about Cam Robinson. He's been asked about Calvin Ridley. He's been asked about edge rusher. He's been asked about interior offensive defensive line and nothing. No information, no tipped hand. And he's asked about corner. He's going to say that, oh, we're going to add there and that's a big priority when it's not. Like, yeah, we need help, but I don't think we need help at corner. We need depth at corner, not a first-round pick at corner. So I think this was a massive smokescreen. Pencil it in. If I'm wrong, that's fine. But, dude, I think because of this, we're not taking a corner in the first round. Will we take one in the draft? Probably. But I don't think it'll be an early draft pick. I do not think that. The school of thought that uh, sometimes in the first round, taking a tight end early is uh, you know, not a good decision, like top 10, because of the value of that position. I don't know. When I was in San Francisco. Okay, so then... Now he's going to, like, this, I really only wanted to watch the first five minutes. Um, because then he gets, like, w w multiple questions about Jim Harbaugh, which I don't understand why. And we're going to look at Doug Peterson's interview here in a second. He gets questions, he gets multiple questions about Jim Harbaugh. My cat just knocked something loose here. Um, don't know why. He gets asked about tight ends being drafted early. I don't know if like other teams media was here asking him questions because I don't know why he got asked so many questions about Jim Harbaugh. I don't know why he's being asked about drafting a tight end early because there's no tight ends. We're not drafting early and we have a tight end. So the rest of it. And then I think he goes on to he, he goes on to talk more about how they're negotiating with Josh Allen. It's a whole lot of nothing. I think, like I said, the biggest thing we can take away was the corner thing, which I don't think which I think leads me to believe that we are not going to draft a corner. He's, he's going to go. He's going to go in depth about needing a position at the only position that I think we're fine at. Like I know Tyson Campbell was injured, but if we are predicting all these other people to not be injured next year and to roll with them, we're going to randomly just pick. We're we're not. We're worried about corner. Big smoke screen. He wants the guys below us and above us to go on a corner run. Take all the corners in the first round. Leave the big boys for us. That's what this was. And it wasn't even that tactically done. If I can read through this, every other team's like, okay, Trent Balky. Uh, this sounds a little too deep for Balky. Exactly. Uh, Jaggernaut says, Jags United, been a while, man. Great to see you. I know. It's been like a month. Maybe it's been like three weeks. Is that a month? Depends on the month. February, maybe. Matt Gidry says, drafting a kicker first round confirmed. <laughs> Brennan says, we need O-line more than corner. Yes. Steven Giles says, we feel good about it. We've got a good group, and we're happy about it, and we're definitely going to address that. I, I, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just a whole lot of nothing. It's a whole lot of nonsense. It's a whole lot of nothing. It's, it was such a waste of time, just like all Trent Baalke interviews. The guy's too arrogant to uh, accept that he's made mistakes. He's too arrogant to tell you what he wants to fix. He's, he's, he's a system guy. It's why Shad Khan's turned the keys over to him because he's a complete system guy. Jaggernaut says, the whole time I watched Balky up there, I was just thinking, fire this guy. Get him out. Ron Beatry says, hello, my friends. Volkfang says, don't give me hope that JPJ might come to Duval. I want to run the ball. Yeah, um, I want him too, man. There, have you noticed that there's a lot of linemen that came out of the former Pac-12 that are, like, projected to be in the first round. I don't know. Does that – it doesn't really concern me, but, like, it gives me pause. Like, why are all these – I know I know the Pac-12 was pretty good this year, like, team-wise, but, like, do Pac-12 linemen usually end up being good? I, I don't know. I mean, I know Walker Little from Stanford, but, like, I always thought that Pac-12 played a more, like, a spread style of, like, lighter, faster offensive linemen, which is not what we need. We need some of these big boys that can, like, attack – Callie Jack says, if we roll with Fartner again, you think Khan will uh, shit Cam Balky? No, probably not. Like I, I just said, I mean, I think he's I think he's married to it here. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at some Doug Peterson stuff here. And why you made the moves you made, no passing game coordinator, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so asked about the moves he made on his coaching staff and the passing game coordinator and all of that. Obviously, you know, you make tough decisions at the end of the season and uh, you evaluate as a head coach, you evaluate a lot of different things and, um, you know, made some tough, tough moves, tough decisions. I appreciate what those guys have did for me and, and for the Jaguars the last two years. And, 
and, and then it, and then it, my focus was you know to get the next next group of guys in there and um, you know I sat down myself uh, Trent Balky Ethan Wall uh, Regis Eller we all just sat down and and um, you know we interviewed a, a really a really good group of men you know for de defensive coordinator and um, it was a really good process for me to go through and um, you know we came came away all you know feeling really good about about Ryan and what he brings and and where he's been who he's been around the players he's coached uh, and, and what he can what he can bring to our defense and then you know just just kind of from there it just uh, you know um, Matt House been in the NFL you know with Kansas City Chiefs he's won a Super Bowl been a defensive coordinator um, you know just a, a great history there to, to be the inside backer coach uh, I, I kept Bill Shuey as the outside backers Roy Seagrass is still assistant D-line um, you know uh, Chris Richard uh, been in the NFL has been on a Super Bowl team so guys that have had these these backgrounds of, of success and and uh, coach players at a high level uh, are all guys that I wanted you know um, you know, on staff and, and Corey Robinson, who, who coached with Ryan in New Orleans, uh, obviously came from the University of Tennessee. Um, again, helping helping in the secondary uh, there as well. And you know, um, I look at Jeremy and Jeremy Garrett. You know, the defensive line coach. I, I you know, he, he obviously has a, a really good background, a collegiate background, but but he, he's been in the NFL. He's been a, you know been an intern, been an assistant, different places, Cleveland, stuff like that. So he knows. He's, he's been around great players. He's had a chance to be around Miles Garrett in Cleveland and, and uh, Olivier Vernon in Cleveland. And so, you know, it's 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 a good group of men. And then the assistant guys, um, you know, uh, I think of Mario. I think of Mike. You know, guys that have guys that have been in this league. Um, you know, uh, kept Pat Riley. Obviously, I love Pat and and what he can bring. And it just just kind of gives me a um, a group of men that that. Number one, um, you know, are, are going to get going to get the most out of our players. Obviously, um, you know, scheme might change just a little bit, but I think the look of it's going to change probably the most. You know, what you see, but but it's all for the for the better. And uh, again, I'm excited for the future. Excited to work with these guys. You know, coming up this off season. All right, a, a two and a half minute answer. Thank you, Doug Peterson. Like this is why people like Doug Peterson and people don't like Trent Baalke. Like. Did he, like, shed any new information? Yes. I mean, he definitely said that the look of the defense and the formation is going to be the most obvious. Which leads me to believe we're going to run the 4-3, which I think everyone kind of already knew. Um, which is good, because that puts Trevon Walker in a way more advantageous position than he had been. Um, I, I think this is just a great answer. He names every single coach by name, some by first name, some by full name. Talks about their background and why he brought them in. Trent Baalke said he kind of gave autonomy to Doug Peterson on the coaching staff, which, thank God. But they felt good about Ryan. He even got a little personal and said it was a good process for him to interview a defensive coordinator. I don't Maybe he hasn't been involved with that in the past too often. I mean, he was on traditionally winning teams, so you probably don't change coordinators too often on winning teams. But this was at least a good answer here. And this is why we like Doug Peterson. And this is why we have no problem with him. But thank you for giving us a good answer here, Doug Peterson. Thank you for giving us a little bit of information. Uh, thank you for not gaslighting us. Thank you for not treating us like we're idiots, that we can't empathize with your job. Thank you for being a real person, Doug Peterson. For, uh, from all Jags fans, we really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Volk Fang says the draft seems deep with interior offensive line, offensive tackle, wide receiver, and DB. Yeah, it's true. Um, that only leaves, what, running back? quarterback and safety <laughs> Line, linebacker Jaggernaut says might be a rough year transitioning the D with bulky at the helm won't get Nielsen the players he needs I think this defense is set up actually pretty nicely to be a 4-3 if you bring everybody back uh, obviously you gotta figure out what you can do at safety you gotta get depth at safety and corner you gotta get your linebackers to step up and play better I think your D line will play better in a 4-3 I think you're Linebackers will play better in a 4-3. Um, the only issue I have, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, is how the corners will play and press, press man. I think they can do it. Again, the, they're not going to—they're not big physical corners. They're going to be able to offhand jam at the line of scrimmage with their hands. 
But you can you can play press with your feet. You really can. If you're fast enough and quick enough, you can do it. And if you know where your help is and you know your coverage assignments and responsibilities, you can do it. So um, I'm excited to see it. I think it'll be a good change. I really do. Following up on that, you mentioned uh, um, uh, Jeremy Garrett's time in the NFL, even, but I guess you know, in college, what did you, you see at Auburn that made you feel he was actually ready to like, come back? Yeah, I, you know, when I sat down and interviewed him, um, the thing that, that, that stood out right away was his confidence, his attention to detail. and, and that Confidence and attention to detail, boys. If you're looking for what hiring bosses are looking for, those two things right there. That's a life lesson. Short life lesson for today. Confidence, attention to detail. Those are things that that's who I am as a coach, right? You pay attention to the little things. And, and uh, that, that's what kind of drew me to him and, um, you know, uh, allowed me to hire him and, and get him on staff. So, again, another one that, you know, um, I'm excited to work with. And, and, um, and he's got a great teacher in Ryan, obviously a former D-line coach. Um, who, who I know will have his hand on, on the defensive line and, and making sure that's going in the right direction. So obviously that was a big part of what the Jags did when they brought in Ryan Nielsen was the fact that he does have Ryan Nielsen experience with the D-line. It's no secret that we need a little bit more production from the interior. We need a little bit more production from our rotational edge rushers on third down and fourth down and passing down situations. So that's probably a big reason why they brought Nielsen in. I mean, think about uh, when they had Caldwell. You thought that he was going to turn our linebackers into the Buccaneers linebackers, the Levante Davids, the Devin Whites, and all that, and and they didn't, and the Shaq Barretts, and, and you didn't see that. So you bring a guy in to be a specialty at a certain position as a D coordinator, you kind of hope that you see a bump in that position. You're not seeing it with – you didn't see it with Caldwell at the linebacker spot. You're hoping to see it with Nielsen at the D-line spot. You know, I think the number one thing um, that 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 again, how does how does the collegiate game trans translate to the NFL game? Um, we're, we're all ears here, Dougie. You know, and uh, a lot of times, a lot a lot of situations now, you know. College quarterbacks just aren't in a huddle. They're, everything is at the line of scrimmage, right? It's like Again, another question about how quarterbacks, like, I don't, like, I guess, like, everyone was able to ask these guys questions, and they probably gave preference to the local guys first, and then they kind of go into questions from, like, I think national people, asking questions about, like, how do you evaluate a quarterback? Now, obviously, Doug Peterson's opinion on evaluating quarterbacks is going to be important, but it doesn't really help the Jags this year. We have our quarterback. It's always an up tape uh, or uh, up tempo, fast paced style of offense, and just getting guys in the huddle and, and communicating and play. I, I go back to our guy Trevor just a few years ago. You know, it's kind of a foreign deal, right? I mean, just getting in a huddle, calling a play, uh, getting to the line of scrimmage, doing cadence. One thing that people didn't really factor in in Trevor's first year, I understand the Urban Meyer thing. But, like, there, it was a big adjustment coming from Clemson to the Jags. It was, even with Urban Meyer. Um, so, sometimes people don't think about that. And oftentimes we see quarterbacks come in and make a splash immediately. But it either doesn't stick. I mean, it's very, I mean, it's very rare. I mean, think about the top drafted quarterbacks recently. And they've struggled either out of the gate or, you know, eventually. I mean, think of the top quarterbacks we've had that we have in the league right now. Josh Allen struggled early in his career. Uh, Patrick Mahomes sat for a, a couple years. Um, Justin Herbert had a huge adjustment curve, and he's kind of hit some dips here lately. Trevor Lawrence um, now kind of starting to come to it now. Uh, you look at guys like Jalen Hurts, who I hate to call him a system quarterback, but I just I don't think Jalen Hurts would be that good outside of Philly. And I could be wrong there, but I just feel like that Philly offensive line, the big body receivers, the running game that they have, the defense, I mean, that helps a quarterback, no doubt about it. I mean, it's rare for quarterbacks to come out guns blazing their first year. It really is. Um, C.J. Stroud, he's been good. And, like, I'm expecting him to have a little bit of a sophomore dip next year just because we see precedence of quarterbacks. So like, it, it's hard in the NFL, man. It's hard. So, it's 
good to see, hear Doug Peterson kind of talk about generalities in the NFL because we he, he's so locked in about talking about the Jags. Sometimes we don't we miss his fresh perspective on the NFL, and his fresh perspective on the NFL I think can unlock some things about the Jags. I know that's deep, boys. Uh, Nolly full cap spams the Blake Bortle emojis. Guy says a bump in the D line would be a cop out given Hamilton's situation. Should have been a breakout player last year. So Devon Hamilton did have some like weird issues last year, um, back injury, an infection. From everything that I'm hearing, it was a weird situation. Um, I actually think we'll see some production from Devon Hamilton next year. If you think before his injury, he was pretty good. So I'm he's a guy that I'm going to be cautiously optimistic about. I still want to add the interior defensive line, but I think if we do add to the interior defensive line, it's not going to be Devon Hamilton's spot that's taken. I think it's going to be Roy Robertson Harrison's spot that's taken. So, I, I mean, we'll see. Volkfang says having the worst O line in, in in the NFL hasn't helped Trevor either. Good point. Being under center, um, set, those are things that you're. No, because, you know, it, it, they're doing what's best for them. They're trying to win a, a national championship, right? Obviously, we're trying to win a Super Bowl. So you've got to be very. These questions um, are just atrocious. Um, precise. You've got to. Obviously, you know, you make tough decisions at the end of the season and uh, you evaluate as a head coach, you evaluate a lot of different things in college football, but they don't all have blue chip athletes at every position factor in getting the quarterback right. Tom, you were there as a player till now, you keep getting it right. Man, that's a, that's a great question. Um, obviously, you know, um, you think about Coach Reed was there. So this kind of goes into more not Jag stuff, but let's just listen. Right. And uh, Mike Holmgren, you know, was there. I think about the Brett Favre days and, and obviously with Andy and, you know, Andy seems to have gotten it right here in, in Kansas City. Um, he got it right in Philly with Donovan, you know, and, and um, it, it just takes time. It just takes time. You have to, you know, you have to uh, invest the time in these players to find out who they are and, and if they're going to be the best ones for your organization. I know in, in Green Bay. They actually traded for Brett, right? Brett, Brett was in Atlanta. And who, who knows what would have happened if, if he had stayed in Atlanta. I feel like he knew he was going to answer questions for 15 minutes. And he's like, let me just talk about everything that's not the Jags. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, he is a long-winded answer type of guy. We saw in his first question and his second question. He's going to take the time to genuinely answer. Um which I appreciate. I'm also a long-winded talker, as you guys know. Uh, so he's being true to himself. I, I rescind my comment about him trying to take up time because I genuinely think he he's actually cares about this reporter's question and why they're asking. I mean, I get it. He's a quarterback guy. Steven Giles says, how do you think Trevor would have fared the last two years if he was with the Eagles? Dude, he'd be the number one quarterback in the league right now if he was with the Eagles. 100% hands down. Mrs. Duval, channel member, says, no offense to anyone else wanting a rookie center. I'm interested in a veteran center to come in and make Fortner fight for his job. There's a couple in free agency that should be considered. Mrs. Duval bringing the heat there because I kind of agree with that. Um, but I think some of the reasons why some of us like these interior offensive linemen is because they, a lot of them that are projected to be first and second round picks are kind of versatile and can play multiple positions. Like Jackson Powers Johnson could play center or guard. And we have a glaring need at left guard. Now, maybe you're thinking Walker Little could play left guard. Maybe. Maybe. But I don't want to roll into the season with Brandon Sheriff, depending on him. Because the bottom line is, the issue with this team was not the starting 22. The issue with this team was the depth. As soon as Tyson Campbell went down, we couldn't cover. When Cam Robinson wasn't in the lineup, we couldn't block. When Christian Kirk got hurt, no one could get open. So, like, it's, the issues are with the depth, and that's where the drafting comes in. And that's and I've been tough on Trent Baalke this whole time about that. Someone mentioned earlier in the comments, like, he had a decent free agency class. He did, but to be fair, you should hit on your free agency class. You're overpaying for players you know that are good. 
it's the drafting that I put more stock into as a GM because though you're going to have injuries, right? Like I get it. Our starting 22 last year on paper was, was really good, but you start getting injuries to the guys I just mentioned, not to mention Cisco, not to mention Sheriff uh, had dealing with some injuries. Rumor has it. Fortner was dealing with some injuries last year, Trevor. So you just, you got to have depth. And you look at any of these teams that win, they plug in guys when they need to, and they can do their job. You're not asking them to be outstanding. They're just doing their job. And the problem is, is every second string player on our team could not step in and do their job. I'm trying to think of a single person that came in. Are we going to give Parker Washington credit? He didn't play very much. Um, I can't think of anyone else. Dewey Wingert, who could probably be a free agent, he stepped in and did okay. No one else stepped into those roles when they needed to. We all we hear all the time about this next man up mentality. I didn't see any next man up. I saw zero mi next men up. Zero. Goose egg. Sorry, I'm pulling a Doug Peterson on y'all. Volkfang says, I think the value pick is a rookie center. I think there's better guards in free agency versus centers. Amend your statement. One guy started almost the whole season. He was just one of the worst players. Cough, cough, Fortner. True. Okay. Okay. I'll amend. I'll amend. Only because I like you, Volkfang. At the time, but, you know, um, Ron Wolf saw something in Brett and made the trade, and, and obviously the rest is history. Aaron, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers came in on the heels of that, and, and now... They're the right quarterback, and what have the, the conversations been like with Trevor over the last few weeks? We do have the right quarterback. Thank you, Mia O'Brien. Thank you, Mia O'Brien. For some reason, people like to hate on Mia O'Brien. I get it. She had a jab at YouTubers. I personally, I'm okay with having thick skin, and I'm okay with letting people have their opinion. I'm open-minded. I'm a critical thinker. Okay, I can think outside of my emotions. Emotionally, why you're big media? Why are you hating on YouTubers? But critically thinking, she's only the one asking good questions of these people. Do we have the quarterback in Trevor? Now, the answer may be to all of us, we'll know crap. He's great. But if you look at the rumblings and some of the fringe people, they're out there saying that Trevor's not it. So she's going to make Doug Peterson say, with his own words, that Trevor Lawrence is it. Appreciate that, Mia. Quarterback. Um, I'm excited for the future with Trevor. Um, he's excited. Uh, the conversations we've had since the season. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I don't get into the contract stuff. I mean, that's I leave that for, for Trent and the agents and stuff. But I just know that our guys, the right. You notice that everyone's leaving everything to everyone else. They asked about the coaches. Oh, I'll leave that to Doug. That's about the contract. Oh, I'll leave that to Trent. Now, but Trent's also saying they're working together on stuff. So are we working together or are we not? And maybe I'm overthinking that. But, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Volkfang says, uh, you couldn't predict the bevy of injuries on the O-line through training camp preseason in the first few weeks. Well, you knew that Cam Robinson wasn't going to be available for four games. You knew that. Um, but you're right. Chase says Dewey's a lifer. <laughs> Guy says, LOL, or we have Chad Muma getting a free season pass. <laughs> Raiden, what up, Raiden? Says, I'm James Jonah Jameson, and I want a picture of Spider-Man. Volkfang says, Mia can be wrong about YouTubers, but she consistently asks some of the best questions and has solid commentary. I agree. I agree. I've told you guys this before, and um, I, I, I talk with a someone that used to work on the local radio station here in Jacksonville. And I kind of, and I feel bad about this. I kind of baited him into like taking a jab at Mia. I wanted to just kind of see if he would. And he staunchly was like, no, Mia's like that dude. Like Mia knows her stuff. And I've come full circle on that. So I respect it. Thank you for asking the good questions. Right guy. He's got the right demeanor. He's got the right leadership. And it's our job as coaches now to make sure he takes that next step. And, and this will be another big offseason for him and, and uh, his development and growth. By no means is he, where, is, he, is he where he wants to be or where we want him to be. Um, 
but really looking forward to, to working another year with, with Trevor. I love that answer, man. I just love Doug Peterson. Great hire. Can you imagine if we would have hired Byron Lefwich? Like everybody wanted. I hate to be like the guy that was like, oh, I was right about that because I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. I was right about this one. I wanted Dougie P the whole time. Didn't buy any of the other hype. You know, I actually wanted more than Doug Peterson um, before uh, Doug Peterson <laughs> was uh, O'Connell from the Vikings. I wanted the Jags to go get O'Connell. But then before, before I, I think I said it a couple times on the live shows and literally the day I said it, the Vikings went out and just like randomly got O'Connell. And I was like, ah, that's kind of who I wanted. I wanted someone from that McVay tree. Um, I knew you weren't gonna be able to get the office coordinator. So I was like, get the quarterback coach. And, but as soon as he was taken, I wanted Doug Peterson. So worked out well. Next step for, for Trevor. What, what is that next step? I just, What's the next step for Trevor? Great question. I just think, you know, uh, continuing to understand our offense, right? Get better with the scheme and, and really still put more of an impact to his voice in our offense, you know, cause he's the one out there executing and calling the play. So, you know, I want him to speak up and, and, and really take ownership in that with us. And, and just, you know, the the situational part of football, too. Just understanding game situations. Not running a QB sneak when it, from the two-yard line when it wasn't called. You know, managing the game in a certain way at certain times throughout the course of the game. And, you know, these are all areas that we can continue as a staff to, to assist him and help him, um, you know, get to where we want to be. Great answers. How much better is it listening to Doug Peterson than Trent Baalke? Can we just let Doug Peterson be the GM? Have we – how has no one explored that option? Maybe he doesn't want to be GM. He apparently doesn't even want to play call plays. So maybe he doesn't want it. But, dude, this guy at least is honest with us, dude. He doesn't treat us like idiots. I put a lot of clout and respect on people that don't treat people like idiots, okay? We're not idiots, Trent Baalke. We know that Cam Robinson's contract is ambiguous because of the consequences it has. Don't sit there and tell us, I don't know where the ambiguity comes from. And that's insulting. That's insulting. Time and time again, he does this to the fans. And this is what pisses fans off, and I get it. Like, I don't even care what your decisions you make. Back them up. Take accountability. Sorry. Tekken's My World says, I wanted either Leftwich or Dable, to be honest. Listen, Tekken, I thought C.J. Henderson and Clavon Chazon were good picks. Okay? I thought they were. So. Uh, if only Adrian Wilson was our GM. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he wanted Byron, right? And that wasn't that the thing? I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. In terms of you know, fourth down and two point conversions, how has the league evolved since 16 and 17? Well, I think I think the asking about fourth down and two point conversions. Teams are viewing that now as a um, just another offensive play. I mean, it's a, it's got to be like a Lions reporter, right? Who just watched Dan Campbell just abuse every fourth down and two point conversion. Got to be a Lions guy who's just kind of walking around, saw Doug Peterson up there. He's like, you know what? I'm going to ask him how he feels about fourth downs and two-point conversions. It's an important play. It's an impactful play. But, you know, offensive lines are getting getting good. The quarterback position is getting better. Um, the skills, you know, the running backs are bad. It's just a – I just think in analytics, you know, obviously have a big part of this, you know, in, 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 in helping us decide to, to go for these, you know, um, fourth downs and, and two-point conversions and – and um, I, I do, I do think that it's 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 helping offenses stay on the field. It's helping them, you know. And so the rest of it's just just not crap that pertains to the Jags. So um, I think he talks a little bit about play calling. Um, he he mentions something along the effect of that he's going to like reevaluate the play calling situation here soon, which leads a lot of people to think that potentially he's going to take back over play calling. But like I said in the, earlier in the show, I don't think it matters who calls plays. I, I genuinely don't think there's going to be a big difference between Press Taylor calling plays and Doug Peterson. And I and I get the contrary argument. The offense was good when Doug was calling them. The offense was bad when Press was calling it. I get that. But I think there's probably more variables in that than we understand. Injuries, Trevor injured, not being able to run the ball. I just don't think it's that big of a difference. And like I said, 
Peterson's in the headset. He, every play is running through his headset. Like he at any point can be like, "Now nah, we're running this," or "I'm gonna take over play calling here." And I feel like he would do that. So I get it, though. It's it's tough. I just don't think that that's a big concern for me. John Tom says Jaguars United. How confident are you that we will have a good draft and make good free agent signings? I'm pretty confident we're going to have good free agent signings. I am not confident at all in a good draft. There's my honest feeling. I thought he's been I thought he's done okay bringing in free agents. He's done okay. He's been better than average for sure. Like I said, look at guys like Kirk, Ingram, Aluakon, um uh, Darius Williams. He's done a pretty decent job. It's the draft picks that are just atrocious. And I don't know if he's got a team of people that have scouts that need to be all fired. I don't know if he's got some sort of system that he uses. But, I mean, this is the same guy that drafted, like, four defensive linemen in a row in, in first round. This is the same guy that drafted, um, like, two offensive linemen in, two, in the first two rounds back in, like, 2014. So, like... He's got a system that he uses. It seems like it's best available player type situation based on the way he drafted uh, Chad Muma after taking Devin Lloyd, um, based on the way that he took Gregory Jr. around before Monteric Brown. Like Just little things like that just lead me to believe that he's a big best available player guy, which I, I'm good with that. Just hit on him more. Like Stop missing on your first and second round picks. And I'll give him credit for Anton Harrison. But you can't whiff on Devin Lloyd, which I hope he's okay. You can't whiff on Tank Bigsby and Britton Strange and, and, and God knows what Ben Trump Miller is going to offer us. I don't know. I really don't know. All right, boys and girls, that's going to end it for me tonight. I, man, I, why did I take a few weeks off? This is like the best part of my week talking Jags with you guys. So we will be back next week. Um... Talking Jacks, because that's what we do. Um, I'm excited about Seton Sesco. United, when does the season start? Well, we'll Seton, our first game is March 7th, okay? And my team's a little young this year. I'm not going to lie. My team's a little young. Um, I'm coaching a soccer team right now. Um, we're we're, we're kind of young. So I don't know how good we're going to be this year. But... Um, in the future, hopefully I'm not coaching in the future. So I'm an athletic director. So my goal is to not coach anything. I want good coaches that will coach and I can just, I can be the Trent Balky, right? But actually give good answers and things like that. Um, so I'm going to coach them up this year. We're going to be young. We're going to, we're going to take our lumps. We're going to learn. And then hopefully I'm going to pass the team along to a more, now that I say that, Seed and Sesco, do you have any interest in coaching? Yeah, any interest in coaching? You know you want to give back to the young kids. Listen, you can't have all that talent and skill and wisdom in you as an adult and not give back to the younger generation. That's selfish, said in Sesco. That is completely selfish. You can't just be out there officiating and refing games, enforcing the rules, when you could be investing into the skill and development of the younger generation. So think about coaching, and if you are, Hit me up because I need some coaches in like every sport. Thank you guys for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I think I am going to jump on Twitch after this. So go ahead and do that. Hit the like button on the way out. I appreciate it. Follow the Instagram and the Twitter and all that stuff. Seriously, guys, from the bottom of my heart, I seriously appreciate you guys being here. I love talking Jags with you guys. I would not be able to do it without you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I sincerely and honestly love all of you. I'll see you guys in one week. And until then. Go Jags.